It is simply impossible to be a great leader without being a great communicator. And I'll share with you a few of those communication traits that if you use consistently, they'll help you actually be a better communicator. If you don't know, I've been a communicator for more than 25 years, so I'm gonna share with you some of the stuff that I know. It is the ability to develop a keen external awareness that separates the great communicators from those who muddle through interactions. If you examine some of the world's greatest leaders, especially in the United States, from Abraham Lincoln to the great communicator Ronald Reagan and even to my favorite communicator Bill Clinton, you'll find that these exceptional communicators have really learned to understand people. And look, they might be talking about ideas or they might be talking about policies. No matter which one it is, they're all filled with emotions and aspiration that they spark in the people they're communicating to. See, they realize that if their message doesn't take deep root into their audience, then they won't end up being the champions of it. I don't believe that it comes to any great surprise that most world leaders spend an overwhelmingly amount of their time in actual interpersonal communications situations. I don't believe it comes to a great shock to a large number of people that organizations and a lot of our personal problems also come due to poor communications. You know, the skills and knowledge you acquire are only valuable to the extent that they can practically be applied when you actually need them. And the number one thing that great communicators have in common is they possess a heightened sense of situational and often contextual awareness. See, the best communicators are great listeners and astute observers of people. Oh yeah, great communicators are skilled at reading people and groups and they get a good sense of the dynamics of the group the attitudes of the group, and really they understand the values that they're trying to communicate with them. Not only do they read the environment very well, but they also possess this really uncanny ability to adapt their message to the people in a way that they'll actually, you know, receive it, but they do it without missing the beat and without compromising the message that they want to get across. And you know what? It's not about the messenger. And that's really important for us all to understand. It's not about the messenger. It is 100% about meeting the needs and the expectations of the people you're communicating with. So you might be asking, how do you know when your skills have matured to the point where you've become an excellent communicator? Well, the answer is you will have reached that point when your interactions with other people have consistently shown these 10 principles. So. I'm gonna talk about it. Let's get at it. Hey, I'm Rob Johnson and welcome to the Legacy Gentleman channel. And like I said, there are 10 things you need to consistently see to show yourself as an excellent communicator. Number one, do not speak with a forked tongue. When people have a sense that a leader is trustworthy, they're actually willing to invest and take risks in ways that they would not be willing to do with a leader who has a reputation for poor character or lack of integrity. And look, while a lot of people do sometimes try to demand trust, you really can't do it. Trust is created when you earn it through honest actions and thinking and honest decision making. Look, keep in mind this, like people will actually forgive you if they actually trust you, but you'll rarely see even forgiveness for little things where trust is absent. Number two, get personal. The more personal engaged in a conversation is, the more effective it will be. But there's a great truth to that old maximum that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Look, this classic business theory tells leaders to stay at arm's length. Look, don't do it. I say stay at arm's length if you wanna remain in the dark about what's truly going on in the business. See, you'll only get the sanitized truth about what's happening with your people and within your organization. If you don't develop meaningful relationships with people who are supposed to count on you and who you're supposed to count on, it will never get into their heads that you're somebody that they can actually connect with. 
connect with people right now before it's too late. Number three, get specific. So you need to learn to communicate with clarity. Simple and concise communication is always better than complicated communications. And I used to have this problem because I used to always want to show people how smart I was. And so I would have these long communicated conversations. And you know what? They just would always miss people. See, even more so today, time is critical to people and they want you to hit the high point so they can have something actionable to actually go on for. See, without understanding the value of brevity and clarity, it is unlikely that people will even afford you the opportunity to get on a granular level with the stuff that you actually need them to do. And honestly, they're probably gonna tune out before you even get there. So, speak with clarity. Number four, focus on the leave behinds, not the takeaways. See, the best communicators have not only skilled at learning and gathering information when communication, but they are also adept at transferring ideas, aligning expectations, expiring actions, and spreading your vision. See, the key to this approach is to interact with each and one with a servant's heart. And when you're focused truly on contributing more than actually receiving, you'll accomplish your goals. Five, have an open mind. A leader takes their game really to the whole new level when they're willing to seek out dissenting opinions and people with the opposite position of them. See, look, the goal really doesn't have to be to convince them to change their mind to your opinion, but it's more just to understand how someone can have a different opinion than you. And then when you have this willingness to have an open dialogue for people to actually confront you about their ideas, it challenges you and it stretches you to actually develop your thinking to the point where it's actually successful. Remember that it's not that their opinion does or doesn't matter, but rather it's about your willingness to discuss it with an open mind and for both of you to learn. Okay, for number six here, I'm gonna need you to put on your big boy pants and maybe break out that super extra thick skin. You need to shut up and listen. See, great leaders know when to dial up the intensity, when to dial it down, and more importantly, when to shut the heck up. See, simply broadcasting out your message ad nauseum will not get the same results as actually engaging people in meaningful conversation. What it actually does is assume that your understanding is in the greatest form than everybody else, and that disclosure is not the best form to actually get your point across and that a monologue or even a lecture will not always get it done. See, when you reach the point in life when the light bulb goes off and you begin to understand knowledge is not gained by flapping your lungs, that's when you'll actually become a great communicator. You know what, speaking of shutting up and listening, have you been listening to the women in your life? But with the holiday seasons coming up, it's never too early to find a gift, which is why I'm going to tell you about my sponsor today, prideandstone.com. You can find a bunch of quality jewelry there that's not too expensive and they're great gift ideas. For me, I got my daughter some stuff from here. I bought myself stuff from here because, yeah, they actually do have outdoor man stuff. But hey, it's getting a little cold, but it's still a great time to buy not too expensive jewelry. So please check out prideandstow.com and see around what they have there for you. I'm sure there's some stuff you'll like and it's all great quality stuff at a reasonable price. Number seven is going to be a tough one because it was a tough one for me it is to replace your ego with empathy. And look, I'm a guy and this is a mostly a channel where a lot of guys watch and I can tell you that actually taking your ego and your pride and yourself out of communication and actually communicating empathetically is sometimes a challenge. But empathetic communication actually displays a level of authenticity and transparency that is not present in those who leave their communications behind this kind of fake facade of ego. And it makes you look fragile when you do that. So understanding that at the communication principle that you're trying to use is gonna build trust and respect 
you're gonna have to communicate from an empathetic standpoint that actually shows yourself as a human being and connects with other human beings. Number eight, you need to be able to read between the lines. See, great leaders and great communicators have the ability to understand what they didn't hear said, what was not witnessed, and what wasn't heard. See, being a leader should not be viewed as a license to actually increase the rhetoric and the volume of speech. This is an age of instant communication. and Everyone seems to be in a rush to communicate. And with that on the mind, you must realize that there's a lot that can be gained when you're actually reading between the lines. So you gotta keep your eyes open and your ears open and your mouth shut. And you'll be amazed at how much your awareness rises and you can actually understand people even when they're not trying to communicate something to you. Number nine, when you speak, know what you're talking about. You know what, in this social media age, that is a very rare thing to see. Which is why I started off telling you that I've been a communicator for more than 25 years. See, we must develop a command over the subject matter we're actually talking about. See, most successful people have little interest in listening to people that they feel will add no value to the topic. And good communications is about the what and the how aspects of messaging so you don't fall prey to becoming a smooth talker who leaves people with the impression that they have no form or substance. And the 10th thing is something I think that's very much overlooked. And I think that you'll be successful if you learn this. It is to speak to groups as if they're individuals. See, leaders don't always have the luxury to speak in the individuals. As I mentioned before, great leaders have a lot of interpersonal communications. But when you have the opportunity to speak to groups of a thousand or ten thousands, you need to actually address that group like you're actually just talking to ten people. Forget how big the auditorium is. If you followed all these other steps where you understand the audience, you can read between the lines, and you actually know what they actually value, you're able to actually make your message tailored to each individual in your crowd, whether they're men, women, children, black, white, or whatever. If you know them and you've established this rapport with them because you're speaking to them individually, you're gonna build trust and credibility. All right, gentlemen, to sum this up, whenever you have a message to communicate, make sure the message is true and correct, well-reasoned, and substantiated by solid logic that is specific and consistent. See, great communicators know that if they spend a little bit of extra time on the front end of the message, it will likely save them a considerable amount of time and aggravation and possibly brain damage on the back end of it. See, most important of all is keep in mind that communication is not about you and your opinion. It's not about your opinion or even the circumstances that you're in. It is about the other people in the meeting, the people in the audience, about the people you're trying to communicate your message with and you bring value into the world. Do these things and you'll dramatically reduce the number of communication problems you experience in your life personally and specifically in your business. All right, gentlemen, thanks for stopping by. As I mentioned before, I have over 25 years of communication experience. If you have some more communication questions or just some communication topics you'd like to hear me talk about, please drop it in the comments. And until next time, go be legendary.